How are we doing today, Peoria? I don't know, guys. Peoria, come on, come on. Do you want to make some money doing what you love? I got to say, I'm really, really excited about being here today. Uh, I am born and raised here in Peoria, Illinois. Did anyone, was it, how many, just by show of hands, how many people were born and raised in Peoria, Illinois? Ooh, a lot of you. And keep your, okay, so another quick question for you. How many people before, like, one minute ago when Kim introduced you, had any idea who I was? Raise your hand if you knew who I was before. My mom, my aunt, my uncle, my aunt, my aunt, and my first babysitter ever. Awesome. I love it when this happens because this means that I get to talk to people that have no idea who I am and that makes me really, really excited. I see you balance, I see you balance. All right, so qu just a quick, uh, quick bit about me for uh, the people that, for 99% of the room that doesn't know me, unless you were like related to me or babysat me. Um, I live in New York City and I am from Peoria, Illinois, so it's really special for me to be here today. I'm gonna run you through kind of what I've done in the last uh, few years, just to give you a sense of who's talking to you right now, and then we'll get into like the fun stuff, right? So, born and raised in Peoria, Illinois, and really quickly, I just before I even get started, I wanna just give a special shout out to my parents who are here, my mom and dad, because uh, they really instilled a lot of entrepreneurial DNA in me. Uh, my dad was, is a great, really, really hard worker, and he was always a great provider, and he started a financial advising business you know, on his own uh, 40 years ago. And he taught me, he, the best thing my dad ever taught me was, it's never the wrong time to do the right thing. And I, that's, really, that's really been my kind of guiding star as an entrepreneur. My mom just has like more energy than like I even know what to do with. She's just like the most energized person ever, most selfless giving person. And so when I talk about a lot of the principles that I'm gonna share with you today, I really thank them for instilling those in me. So, I, if you, if you're a, par how many of you are parents in this room? Oh my God, you guys, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Put, put like your second hand up in the air if you are totally committed to empowering your children to do amazing things in the world. That, like, for me, that is, and I, I see my aunts and uncle, and they are doing the same thing for their families. It's like, guys, if you're a parent, you have no clue how much power you have over your children. It's like almost scary when I think back, like my parents could have really, really messed me up, man. So <laughs> seriously, so use like, oh my God, like you're like, whatever you say, mom and dad. So like Kim, I was talking to Kim earlier and she said, we just say yes, 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 yes. And my husband as well just says yes, yes, yes. Just say yes to your kids, let them dream, let them do their thing. All right, so that's the parent thing um, that I want to talk about. Where have I been and how, do I, how did I end up on this stage tonight? Today, I guess. Um, I, when I, I was recruited to play college football at Butler University, which at the time was a Division I AA school. It was the best offer I got. I really wanted to play Division I college football. I played for a couple years, suffered some really bad concussions, and quit. Bad, a lot, a lot, a lot of stories around that, but I want to get to the good stuff, which is the content of the conversation. I ended up then moving to San Francisco, teaching AmeriCorps for one year, and then from AmeriCorps, I moved to New York City, where I got a law degree, and then from the City University of New York, and then I worked for Mayor Mike Bloomberg, and I was in charge of recruiting volunteers for his Northern Manhattan office. After, we had like the, did you work for Mayor Bloomberg? Oh, I thought I, you were like this. Did you like, do you love Bloomberg? Okay. I'm like, all right, cool. She was, I was like, I work for Mayor Bloomberg. She's like. Maybe she's just she's stretching? I don't know. Just, just, okay. Fine. Let's just, you know, Everyone, just throw their hands in the air. Do it. Just, yeah. Perfect. All right, cool. So I ended up having like the best numbers of anyone in the campaign. And Bloomberg, after he won the, the, the re-election campaign, asked me, he said, Brian, you, you did such a great job. Like, what do you want to do? We want to keep you in the administration. And I said, I want to be a speechwriter. And so I ended up writing speeches for Bloomberg's administration, for one of his commissioners, for a couple of years. And then I moved to San Francisco, and I started my own business five years ago. And that's what I do today. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. Um, but, but to be back 
in Peoria, and I, I also credit a lot of my like grit and like care for people and just like the desire to do good for the world to this community here in Peoria. So if you're from Peoria, I really want to get you guys to give yourselves like a really nice round of applause. And if you're not from Peoria, like I, you're dead to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You guys are cool too. So. Um, what I do now, I basically saw that, that all of the things that I did, and by the way, when I was in law school, I started a couple of social enterprises in the Dominican Republic and Argentina, and I funded money from that privately and to, to make those projects happen. And what I saw was a common thread in everything that I did was this idea of storytelling. And that because if you're gonna sell a mare, if you're gonna tell people to become a volunteer for you to work for free for 60 hours a like, month, you have to really tell a good story. If you want to raise money for kids in the Dominican Republic that are in orphanages from private people that will never meet them, you have to tell a good story, right? And so I thought to myself, all right, well, storytelling is an interesting thing. I wonder if I can make money doing it. Well, it turns out you can actually make really good money if you know how to do it well. And so when I moved to San Francisco, I'm going to tell you a couple of funny stories about San Francisco in a second, but just fast forward in the last five years, what I've been able to do is literally be an advisor for the best companies in the world to help them tell their story in a way that's the most interesting, the most compelling, the most intriguing, and ultimately that leads other people to wanna to buy their stuff. And that's, I think everyone in the room today that has a business, like the only reason you have a business is because other people buy your shit, right? <laughs> Like, and so, so how do we make that happen? That's what I do. And I do it for companies, and I do it for entrepreneurships, for entrepreneurs, and I do it for small businesses, right? And I help them tell their story in this digital age. Let me tell you a couple of really exciting things for every single seat in this room that is filled. You are living, we are living in the most exciting time ever in the history of ever in the history of ever to do what we love. Oof, can I get like an amen or something? Jeez, are you guys tired? It's like 11. All right, ever. I just told you you can make lots of money doing what you love, and you're like, cool, dude. Come on, guys. All right, so this is, ex is this like a bad place over here, Ron? I should, I should stay over here, yeah, by the podium. All right, got it. So, um, I, I got you. Joe, don't look at me like you're better looking than me. I know you are. All right, so, ever in the history, and I'm gonna kind of walk you through, I get access to the smartest people in the world. The Googles, the Facebooks, the Intels, the Twitters. I've worked with all of them. And I get access to the smartest people in the world. And what I think is really cool about what we can do today, and Kim mentioned this when we were talking before this speech, is, you guys don't have to travel to the Silicon Valley to get the information that I'm gonna share with you. And I, this is why I love what I do. Because I don't think you should have to live in San Francisco or New York City to have access to the smartest people in the world. And so what I do is I get that information and then I bring it and I distribute it all over the world. All over the world, literally. I travel six to seven months a year all over the world sharing this message with you. So I'm really stoked that you're here. Now let's jump into it. First of all, how many, you don't have to raise your hand, I don't want to make you see you. A lot of people wrote me, I wrote an email about a week ago, I was in Mexico, and I wrote an email to everyone and I said, hey guys, I have three questions. What's your name and what do you do? What's your biggest goal from my talk? And what is one of the biggest frustrations that you have currently in your professional and personal lives? You guys' answers were awesome. Like for the 50 people or 60 people that wrote me back, I read those answers so many times. I just want to thank you because I, it, it, like, it like blows my mind that so many speakers will come to a conference and they will have no idea who you guys are. And by the way, the 50 and 60 of you that emailed me, I know everything about you. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you more about that in a second. But it's, it, it, it allowed me to really write something for you. So if you wrote in, cool. If you didn't write in, well, I, you know, I don't have to tell you, but we'll still give you some good stuff. All right, so let's get into the speech itself. A lot of people wrote me back and said, Brian, I want more money. A lot of people want more money in this audience. Cool, so do I. 
right? You're in the right place. A lot of people wrote me back and said, I want to just get better at making sales. I want to get more attention to my brand, to my company, to my small business. I want to do more speaking. And then there were other things like, I want to be less stressed. I want to be a better mom. I want to know that someone is listening to me. I want to know how to work smarter. I want to know how to find more balance in my life. Eh? You got a balance coach over here. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'll take 20% of your commission. Don't worry about it. So that's the deal, right? That's the deal. So, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend like the first few minutes kind of talking to everyone, no matter where you are on that spectrum. And then I want to spend a lot of the time of the, t of the talk uh, in two ways. Number one, sharing with you how you can actually practically monetize what you do. And I know that there's a lot of speakers that say, like, you can do it, you can do it. And Kim and I were just talking about this before. You can do it, you can do it. And then you leave. How many people in here have ever been to a conference? And you're like, oh, my God, that conference was amazing. You go home to your husband, your wife, your kid, your grandfather, your mother. And you're like, Mom, that conference was amazing. And she's like, oh, my God, great. What did you learn? And you're like, I learned this, I learned that, I learned that. She's like, all right, now what are you going to do about it? And you're like, I'm going to, um, oh, you know what? I don't know what I'm going to do about it. I promise you that every single person in this room is going to walk out of here with a very clear thing that you can do tonight. That's what makes it. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> I'm not even throwing her business and she's clapping for me. Look, what are you doing? Jeez. All right. So that's the deal. Let's start with part one of our talk. You guys ready? Ready. Yeah? All right. Well, I think you're ready. I feel it. I feel it. I feel good. All right. So. Here's the deal. Part one of our talk is something that Kim talked about in her, in her opening remarks, which were great, is know and understand your why. Right? Like, why are you doing what you're doing? Okay, so let me tell you a couple of, a, a quick story about when I learned this lesson. I've been running my own business now for five years, and when I first moved on to, to San Francisco, I left a good job, a good paying job, a stable salary, uh, apartment, a girlfriend. Actually, she left me, it's another story. But, um, oh, who said, oh, you guys are so sweet in this crowd. I love Peoria. You know, you give this talk in, in Russia, and they're like, mm, good. I'm like, okay, fine, jeez, sorry. I'll date a Russian next time, leave me alone. So, so Peoria is so nice, you guys are so nice. Even if you're from Bloomington, you're still nice. See ya. All right, so here's the thing. Understand your why. So I get to San Francisco, and I, you know, and people say, "Hey, hey, Brian, like, what do you, what do you do?" And I said, "You know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur." They're like, "Cool, but like, what does that mean?" And I'm like, "Oh, you know, I'm an entrepreneur." Like, all right, but like, dude, what are you like? I don't know, selling. Oh, entrepreneurship, you know? And 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 so quickly, my savings like dwindle. Right? I like, had saved some money in New York and they were like going away, but I was in my pajamas. My why was like to be in my pajamas all day, to be like, flexible, to sleep in, to like chill. I want to be cool, I want to be an entrepreneur, right? And my savings were like going like this. Like that. And at, at a certain point, I didn't know how I was going to pay my rent that month. I literally didn't know what I was going to do to pay the rent. So I'm in a bar, I'm in San Francisco, I'm like drunk, right? <laughs> And I'm like drinking this, I don't even drink, I drink like once a year at like Christmas Eve. And like, I'm like drunk, and th this, this girl comes up to me and she starts talking, hey, what's your name? And I'm like, oh honey, you don't want anything to do with me. Like, I can't even pay her rent, like why are you talking to me? And she, she goes, hey, can I, you know, can I get your number? We can maybe go out sometime. And I'm like, okay. So I give her the number. And then like five minutes later, another girl comes up to me, I'm like drinking again, same beer, because I'm like a horrible drinker. And she's like, what, do you, what is your name? And I'm like, oh, not again. She ends up asking me for my number. And then, a couple of minutes later, this guy walks up to me. No, no, no. I know you're thinking it's San Francisco, but no. Listen, he, he walks up to me. He's like, dude, how do you do it? And I'm like, what do you mean, how do I do it? And he's like, how do you talk to girls so easy? And in that moment, I just had this light bulb moment. And I was like, oh, you know, that's, that's like my job. <laughs> and he's like, you, what do you mean? I'm like, have you seen the movie Hitch? Have you seen the movie Hitch? He's like, I've seen the movie Hitch. I'm like, I'm Hitch in the Silicon Valley, baby. 
And he's like, can I hire you? And I was like, I don't know, I gotta check my schedule. I'm broke, I got no money, I don't even can't even pay for my rent, I gotta check my schedule. I didn't have a damn thing to do the next day. And, he, and the next day, he start, he, we start working together. And then he refers me to all these like dorky tech guys in the Silicon Valley, and all of a sudden I have like this business. And I call myself a social liaison. <laughs> and I'm teaching people how to date girls. And I'm making money, and I'm paying the rent, and I'm like, sweet, you know? Taking them out salsa dancing, taking them out to like, here's how you talk to girls in Spanish, like all this crazy stuff, right? And before I know it, I have a business. You know how long that business lasts? Two months. Why? Because I hated it. I felt like the worst human being ever. Because my why of staying in my pajamas, I could stay in my pajamas. The clients were meeting me at night. But that why was a crappy why. It wasn't a real why. It wasn't the why that I knew that I left a good paying job with a lot of upside to pursue. Right? So, Really dig deep, and this is something that I, that I think is probably the most important thing for every single one of us, is to like look at yourself in the mirror tonight and get real about why you do the things that you do. Because let me tell you, as much as people wanna, wanna glorify entrepreneurship, running your own business, even being entrepreneurial within a company, it takes so much strength, mentally, physically, emotionally, and there's gonna be so many times where you're gonna think to yourself, I just don't want to do this anymore, and it's normal. But that's when you have to go back to that why. So I would say, like, every single one of you go home tonight and write down, what is the reason that you do what you do? Whether it's to be the best mom in the world, or to run a hundred million dollar business. Anywhere on the spectrum of what you wanna do, it doesn't have to just be professional, it doesn't have to just be personal, but whatever it is, like, get really clear about why you're doing it, and then be prepared for step number two. Step number two is like, go all in on that. Like all of your actions, every single one of them has to match up with that why. Right, every single action that you, listen guys, for the first 18 months in San Francisco, I budgeted every single dollar I spent for 18 months. I just showed my friend the spreadsheet last week. She was cracking up. She's like, dude, you are crazy. I didn't go to dinner with my friends that were working at Google making $200,000 a year. I didn't go to happy hour drinks. I wasn't, I wasn't doing any, I wasn't going on weekend ski trips. I was $4 salads at Trader Joe's, cooking every single breakfast and lunch, working 15 hours a day, and there were times where I still didn't have enough money to pay the rent. And then you know what I did? I had an apartment in San Francisco that was a nice apartment on a nice location, and then I heard of this company called Airbnb, and for those of you that don't know what Airbnb is, Airbnb is basically a place where you can rent out your apartment when you travel. And when you travel, you can rent out other people's apartments. That's usually how people use it. But what I did, because my why was so clear, and I'll tell you what my why is in a second, my why was so clear, I literally rented out my own apartment on San Francisco, hey, in San Francisco, Brandon. rented it out on Airbnb, and then I went and stayed on friends' couches. I used the money that I made in San Francisco on the apartment to put it into my business, to meet my food needs, my $175 a month food needs, and I put it into the business, and I did that like six different times. And it's to the point where one time, this guy shows up, and I have my suitcase, and I'm living in San Francisco, and he shows up, and I give him the key, and he's like, dude, so where are you going? I'm like, oh, you know, down south. <laughs> And he's like, like uh, LA, San Diego, Mexico. I'm like, you know, like you see that house right there? <laughs> like three blocks south, I'm, I'm going right there. And he's like, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. And I'm like, don't worry about it. Because my why, which was this, which was to level the playing field all over the world for people like you that are here on a Saturday, on a Saturday, on your day off, when you have obligations that are here because you wanna make yourselves a little bit better, because you want your businesses to grow a little bit faster, and you all, I work for you. You are my boss. Everything that I do is centered around leveling the playing field, learning as much information as I can that works for me and works for my clients, and then bringing it to every single person that I can all over the world. 
You think that it's, like, I sometimes don't want to travel. Sometimes there are days I'm like, I don't want to get on an eight-hour flight. And then I look at my why. And it's like, but these entrepreneurs in Mexico who have no access to these ecosystems deserve the knowledge. These people in my hometown deserve the knowledge. That's my why and every single action. Listen, I have a very unique lifestyle. I don't ever, not one time, ever, ask my parents, have they ever heard me complaining about the work that I have to put in? Maybe once in five years I call my mom break, like broke down like third year, like, I need help. You know, but never. Why? Because if you have the the, the calling, if you have that burn in your in your heart and soul to do something, anything it doesn't have to be run a business. It can be anything. If you have it in your heart, then you don't get to complain. You just don't. And every action has to match that why. And get real with yourself about that too. Like, how far would you go? How far? I would rent my apartment out again. I would rent my apartment out again because I know what I'm doing. I get the emails. I get the phone calls. I. Brian, you saved, like I've gotten five people that have called or emailed me that says, you saved my life. Literally, I was gonna kill myself. And your business advice saved my business, which took me out of a depression. Or your advice about knowing myself took me out of a depression. Five times. So when I'm tired, like, tired? Our families came here from different parts of the world without knowing, even knowing English. And we're tired. <sighs> Come on, right? So. Know your why, take actions that match that why. And then here's the third thing that's the most important thing before we get to like the really practical nitty gritty stuff. Go all triple, double, triple, quadruple down on what you are really good at. In America right now, there are a lot of people that are selling you a lot of products on how to get better at your weaknesses. Ignore them, it's a scam. There's a huge market out there that are preying on people's insecurities so that you spend a lot of money on these BS online courses and these BS things with, that, from people that have never done any of the work that they're teaching them. Stay away from them. Think about the one or two or three things that you are the best in the world at. And I can guarantee you that every single one of you has something that you're really good at. It could be organizing a closet, I don't care. Turn it into a business, you can do that. Tr double down, triple down, put all, all of your energy into what you're good at. That's where the magic happens. Don't sit here and think, well, I'm not that good at, org I am the worst organizer in the world. If you look at my digital assets, my digital media, on my desktop, it's, it's a nightmare. I hate logistics, I hate bureaucracy, I hate anything that has to do anything to do with forms. So what do I do? I outsource all of it. What I love is this. What I love is creating content for you. What I love is writing and speaking. So I put 90% of my energy there. And when I did that, when I stopped trying to do everything, by the way, delegating tasks was Christine, Kyle, your wife, that's what she said she wanted to learn. I want to learn how to better delegate tasks. You want to know how to delegate tasks? You figure out what you're amazing at and delegate the rest. That's it. Everyone in this room can do that. And by the way, I had a young lady uh, speak with me after, uh, before the conference, and she didn't know about a couple of websites where you can outsource everything. Write these down, freelancer.com and uh, Fiverr. So, so sorry, I'll go slower. Freelancer is F-R-E-E-L-A-N-C-E-R.com. You can literally do outsource your design work. You can, if, you, if, you, if you're horrible at making websites, have someone make a website for you. If you don't know how to design a brochure, have someone design a brochure. These people are all over the world and they're really cheap and they're very talented. They have samples of the workup, that, that there is just so much that you can outsource. The other thing is Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And it, they used, it was a platform that used to be like, everything was $5. They've changed it a bit. I actually have, have a relationship with their company and they're doing really well. They have a lot of very talented freelancers. So you don't have to do the work and it doesn't have to cost you a lot to have someone else do the work for you. That's how you delegate, all right? So, go, so know your why, all your actions map to, to your why. And let me tell you one more thing before we get into the nitty gritty. If, if, you under, if you really understand where you wanna go, right? Like if you, want, if you understand exactly where you wanna go, you're gonna see everything becomes so easy. Decisions become easy. Do I go here, do I not go here, it depends. If there's five people in the audience, 
and I have an opportunity to go somewhere where there's 500, I'm going where there's 500 because my why is to reach as many millions and millions of people as I can in my life. And my other why is because I want to fill up Madison Square Garden and I want to give a sold out talk at Madison Square Garden. So all of my career is going towards those things, right? That, so, so think about what it is, what is your end goal? And maybe your end goal is to make $5,000 more this year. Cool. I'm not telling you what your end goal should be. I'm just telling you, maybe your end goal is I want two more hours a week with my kids. Cool. Then all of your decisions and all of your actions can very easily map to if that goal is happening for yourself. Right? All right, cool. So I'm gonna, I, by the way, I'm gonna leave a lot of time for questions at the end. So if you have questions, just write them down and think about them. And then that's for me the most fun part of giving a talk is the questions, because then I can really get into your mind. All right? So. That is sort of like no matter where you are on the spectrum of like I want to make a hundred million dollars or I want like five more minutes a day with my husband, these all these things matter, right? These three things that I've pointed out to you matter. Now let me get into a, more of a business side of people here. Just by show of hands, how many people work for themselves? Lots. How many people work in, within a company or organization? I, I'm either like really bad at math or people raise their hand twice. <laughs> work for themselves again? Got it. Work for somebody else? Okay, that make, makes better. So it's about half and half actually. Cool. If you work for yourself, what I say to you today is gonna be, it's literally gonna save you hundreds of hours of your life and make you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars more. If you work for a company, if you, if you take what I say today and apply it to the company that you work for, I promise you, you will get promoted. They will love you. They will be like, what? They, you will come to them with these fresh ideas that I can almost guarantee you, just judging on the emails and judging on different things that no one in this room is even thinking about, all right? So either way, listen up. And if you don't have a business, and if you, if you don't work at all, how you, well, if you don't work at all um, in, like the, in the business world, just kind of dream for me, dream with me a little bit here about what you could start, about what, what talent you have where you could turn what I'm saying into a practical thing. All right, so guys, the most important thing, <coughs> if you don't take anything else from this talk, you have to hear me here. And it, this may sound a bit uh, out there to you, but trust me, this is working. Every single one of you, you and you, and you and you need to stop seeing yourself as Mike and Judy and Jill and Sarah and start seeing yourself as a media company. I'm gonna get into what this means. This is, this is what is fun. This is, the, and by the way, I'm not talking about things that are gonna happen in five or 10 years from now. I hate those talks because they're just not practical. I'm talking about what you can do right now that's gonna dramatically change the next 12 to 36 months of your business. All right, you need to start seeing yourself as a media company. What do I mean by that? You have a huge advantage. Everyone in this room that lives in Peoria, Illinois, or a surrounding area has a huge advantage because you still have the small town thing going on, right? You can still do the old fashioned relationships, but you can very quickly scale yourself to be the place people go to get their information. What do I mean by that? Let me just get, talk to you a little bit about the social media world right now. How many people are on Facebook? Keep your hands up, very high. 10 years ago, that didn't exist. Isn't that crazy? How many people are on Instagram? <coughs> about half. How about Twitter? How many people have a YouTube station? Numbers are going down. Podcast? Good, 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 good. How many people post articles on Medium? How many people know what Medium is? It's okay if you don't. Hardly anyone. This is awesome. I love it. I love this. Okay. Oh, this is great. This is why we're here, right? Like, this is, this is, this is why we're here. Man. Yeah. All right. My friend is, is back there. His name is Kyle Haynes. He has a really brilliant chiropractic clinic. If you guys have any chiropractic needs. I have no affiliate relationship with Kyle. He's just a good friend and a great dude, and actually the one that introduced me to Kim, which is why I have the good fortune of being here. So thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kyle, for letting me be here. Thank you for all of you for listening all this time so far. Yeah, all right. Hot, huh? All right. 
So I want to use Kyle Haynes and his wife Christine, they're in a business together. I want to use him as it. I want to just get practical. I can sit here and tell you all these numbers and these figures. Let's just get real with him. And I can guarantee you from the responses that I got, you can all use this for your business as well. Whether you're selling real estate or insurance or you have a cosmetics line, anything. Kyle Haynes offers chiropractic services, right? So if Kyle Haynes is not looking at himself as a media company, then he does what? He just gives uh, services, nutritional services. Maybe he gives you, a, he aligns your back. He gives you massages. Whatever, whatever other offers he makes in his thing of services, right? That's great. The way that Kyle can grow that into becoming the best chiropractic clinic in Peoria is by turning himself into a media company. And here's what I mean by that. Before I t take you through this case study, the first thing that you need to understand is right now we're at a very interesting place in America because there is more information than ever before available. Do you know that in our phones, right, in our phones right here, in the palm of our hands, we have more information available to us than the pr today than the President of the United States did in 1983? That's crazy. That's cool. The problem with that is that everyone is trying to get your attention. Everyone. Right? And there's a lack, there's more supply than there is demand. It's just what's happening. So if you can't figure out ways to get people's attention and keep that attention, <coughs> your business will fail online. So how do we get attention? It's just a numbers thing. We put Kyle Chiro, Haynes Chiropractic everywhere, just like a media company. The New York Times has, an on, has a print, they have an online, they do videos, they do vlogs, they do interviews, they send you direct mail. We send, they send you, they're a media company, they're everywhere. I want chiropract, HaynesChiropractic.com to be your New York Times for all of your health needs in Peoria. And the only way that happens is by turning him into a media company. Here's what it looks like. Every single day, Kyle has to understand one thing. The gatekeepers are completely gone. If you are on the defense in your business, you're missing a huge opportunity. Right now, if you want a radio show, in the past, what had to happen? Please, Mr. WNBC, put me on your radio. I'll pay you. I'll pay you for coverage. Now, you start a podcast. A podcast is just a radio station that you can start with your phone and a microphone for free. You want, you want, a, you want to have a TV show? NBC, ABC, USA, CBS, please, I have a good idea. And then you know what happens? If they do say yes one out of a million times, you lose complete creative control. They do everything they want, and congratulations, your idea is now their idea, and you are a robot. Right? So now, you don't need to wait for NBC. You can say, you know what, I'm starting a YouTube channel tomorrow. It's the same thing, you don't have to, you don't have to wait for the New York Times to publish your article, you, you get on Medium. Medium is a place, if you don't know what Medium is, write it down, it's very important, M-E-D-I-U-U-M. It's a place that you can self-publish content, and it's a place that a lot of people go looking for business. You want a PR firm? Instead of paying $10,000 for some BS PR firm, who's gonna put, let me tell you something about PR firms. This is, this is the big problem with PR firms right now. How many people in here, raise your hand if you watch a television show when the show actually airs? In other words, not on your time. Raise your hand if you, uh-huh, no one, great. <laughs> of all of those people that didn't raise their hand because you watch it on your time, how many people watch the commercials? No one. Yet $90 billion a year is being spent on commercials. Why does that matter for you guys as small business owners in Peoria? Let me tell you why. Because Facebook advertising right now, you have an opportunity to kill it with your business on Facebook advertising. And you have a two-year window. Because when Macy's, Walmart, Target, when they all figure out that their $90 billion they're spending on commercials is not working, guess where they're gonna move? Facebook. And then we're done, because we can't compete. We just don't have the money. So in the next 24 months, you get to play in the Facebook environment 
and I suggest that you play hard. That's your new PR agent. That's your new PR technique. That's your new PR thing. Literally, if Kyle Haynes, so let me go back to Kyle Haynes. Every single day, Kyle Haynes knows he's a media company, knows the gatekeepers are gone, knows it's his time to take offense for his business. What does Kyle Haynes do? Kyle Haynes makes a video every single day. What is that video? If you think that it's Kyle Haynes saying, hey, I'm Kyle Haynes, I'm a hip, cool guy, you should come to the chiropractic studio and get a, and get a treatment, costs start at $50 an hour, making up his price, I don't, don't quote me on that. People are like, Kyle, you said $50 an hour on the stage, like, I don't know what his price is. No, it's Kyle Haynes and his wife, they just had a baby, congratulations. And uh, you guys don't clap for babies, what's wrong with you? And it's the five things that you need to do to become more fertile. And you know what Kyle Hayes, because I know that's, a, that's an issue that they deal with, fertility, right? So you know what you do with that video? You take that video and you take a 30 second clip of that video, the five foods that you eat on if you wanna become more fertile, and you know what you can do with Facebook ads? This is gonna blow your minds if you don't know this. Right? How many people, just by show of hands quickly, are using Facebook ads already paid Facebook advertising? About a quarter of the room, good. For the other three quarters of you listen, I'm about to change your life. <laughs> Kyle Haynes can now take his phone, take that video, upload that video, and Kyle Haynes can go on Facebook advertising, and if you, if, if, I'm gonna talk fast, so just YouTube, like how to use Facebook advertising, and he can say, I want this ad for $15 to be seen by 5,000 people, I want them to be the ages of 30 and 40, clock's ticking. I want them to be, I want them to have more than $50,000. I want them to already have had one child. I want them to um, live within five miles of our company's location. And then you hit publish. And now, this is what's cool about this thing that we have in our hands. I'm sitting on the toilet as a 35-year-old woman who's like stressed about not getting pregnant. And I'm like, oh, God, John's dog. Oh, Bill had another baby, bastard. <laughs> oh, five foods you can eat if you're 35 and trying to get pregnant? What? <laughs> Kyle doesn't know me. I don't know Kyle. But now all of a sudden, without disrupting any of my behavior, because this is what I do on the phone and the toilet anyway. <laughs> it's gross, right? It's disgusting. I know. I sent my sister pictures on the toilet. She's like, Brian, you're disgusting. <laughs> it's gross. Um, now all of a sudden, Kyle Haynes, without disrupting a second of my life, is in my world. And what do I do? I click on that, because it's of interest to me. And I didn't even, have you ever thought about this? Like why all of a sudden you're getting things in your newsfeed from people you don't know? That's what's happening, my friends. They're targeting you, because you fit some sort of description. And you can do it too. They're going on offense to get you. It's time that we all go on offense to get our customers. You wanna sell, sell more real estate? Do a video of your property, put it on Facebook, advertise to 50 to 60 year olds that are making more than $500,000 a year that are within 10 miles of your radius and put it up on Facebook or on Instagram. This is the future of, of PR. Does that make sense to everyone? Now, here's where it gets really fun. All right, cool, Kyle utilized Facebook, but Facebook alone is not enough because he's a media company, remember? And we have to hit them everywhere. You wouldn't bring your bathing suit and wear it to a wedding just like you wouldn't bring a tuxedo to a swimming pool. Every medium is different. You have to communicate with people differently in every different situation. And so what, what that means for Kyle now is we put that video on YouTube, or we put that video on Facebook, we put that video on YouTube, we put that video on Instagram, we put that video on Snapchat, and now what we do is we take the audio from Kyle and Christine talking about the five foods that make you fertile. We rip that audio, and again, Google this stuff if you don't know how to do it, it's easier than you think, and you put that on the, Chi the Haynes Chiropractic Daily Podcast. Kyle hasn't, Kyle's done one thing. He stood in front of a camera for five minutes and started talking about five foods. But now, we have it on Instagram, we have it on Facebook, we have it on Twitter, we have it on Snapchat, we have it on a YouTube station. Now you rip that, you put it on a podcast. Now you can listen to him while you're driving, right? 
And then you take that podcast, you take that audio, you transcribe it, you put it on LinkedIn, you put it on Medium, and you put it on your blog, on your website. Congratulations, you are now a media company. With one five minute piece of content, you have now just hit 10 different sectors of the market that are all looking for what you have. That will grow your business fast. And then, then the fun thing happens because then in a city like Peoria, my mom calls her sister and my mom's sister calls her sister and my mom's sister's sister calls her friend. And all of a sudden with this one minute video that you've made, you've not only hit the social worlds, but you've hit the personal worlds. That's why living in Peoria is so exciting for business people. Get it? Yeah, cool? All right, so that's sort of a, I wanna get through two more quick points and then take Q&A. But turn yourself into a media company. I really suggest to you all to go home sometime this weekend or this week and spend 15, 20 hours on YouTube learning about these social media platforms, okay? Now, that's number one. Number two, the thing that I was gonna mention just briefly, if your website is not on mobile, it's not mobile friendly, in other words, if I go to www.hanschiropractic.com and it's not showing up on my phone or only half of the screen is up, in the next two years, every single person will be on this. And you will lose the game if you are not mobile friendly. So every single person in this room that has any sort of business, please go home tonight, Google, how do I know if my, if my website is mobile friendly? They'll send you a URL. In that URL, you put your company URL and they will say, yes, you're mobile friendly. No, you're not. If you're not mobile friendly, fix it as soon as you possibly can. Google is actually punishing you if your site is not mobile friendly. They're moving you down in the ranks and they're gonna keep doing it, okay? Just a quick practical tip. A lot, the other thing I wanna say is this. Those of you that wrote in, I love you. I love you for writing in. I stalked you, all of you. I went to your websites, I went to your Instagrams, I went to your Facebooks, I went to your LinkedIn's. And here's the thing that almost every single one of you is getting wrong. And this is also going to completely shift how your business does. What I'm seeing is this. I'm seeing sales, 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 event, 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 sales, 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 something of value. Sales, 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 event, something of value. Or I'm just seeing nothing but like a few options to buy at the bottom of your, whatever your, whatever your, page, your Facebook pages, whatever your Instagram pages, like, or I'm seeing like pictures of your dogs, or pictures of your ski trip, or, and unless you're like in the ski business, I don't care about your, like that doesn't help me understand that you can fix my back, right? So instead, take this approach, and I can promise you, this is a long game approach, right? This, you're not gonna see results in the next month, but this in the next, I, how many people in here want to be in their business for like a long time? Yeah, this is something that we don't understand. It's like we all want results in the next one to six months, but I'm like, but do you, are, like, what, are you gonna die in six months? Like literally, are you done in six, like are you gonna retire in six months? If you're not there, then see this as a really long game. Like I'm in this thing for, for the rest of my life, hopefully. I have 60 more years to do this. So have a little bit of patience with all the strategies that I'm telling you, but trust me, this is where things are going, all right? So the, the thing I wanna tell you is, you have to reverse, you have to reverse what you're offering. Instead of take, 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 offer, 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 you have to give, 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 then ask. Not sell, ask, give, then do it again, give. So Kyle, five foods. Here, here are the videos that Kyle can do to, to match this. Five foods to make you more fertile. Five ways to keep your posture good when you sit at a desk all day. Five ways to eat uh, less sugar in 2017. Five ways to know if you're not stretching enough. Five easy stretches you can do in five minutes. Now every day, when I want some sort of well-being tip, I go to Kyle. I go to handschiropractic.com and I look to see what he's doing. Because now Kyle is a trusted thing instead of a guy who I don't know that's trying to sell me things. And eventually, when Kyle says, hey, for this week only, we're offering 997, you know, all-inclusive one-week treatments, I'm like, I like him, he's giving me a lot of value, people will actually feel so bad that you've given them so much for free that they'll buy from you. <laughs> I'm serious. 
happens. This is why compass, Nike, like, how many people here eat cereal? Right? Cereal has been branding stories to you. Like, Nike, just do it. Swoosh. Like, Nike's not sending you, like, banner, like, personal emails. Hey, hey, you know, hope you buy our new shoes. Like, you just buy them because you've just, they've been a part of your life for so long. Michael Jordan and all these things. You don't even know what's happening. Before you know it, you're buying Nikes. You're spending $200 on shoes, and they've never once done anything but given you value and made you feel like you're a part of a community. Why do you think these big brands are so damn good at what they do? Because they just give you a bunch of value. Budweiser commercials? I cry. <laughs> How many people saw the Budweiser commercial that, that recounted Harry Carey's play-by-play -play announcement of the world? I, was, I cried. And I went, I bought a Budweiser. I hate Budweiser. <laughs> I hate it. I think it tastes so bad. But I'm like, to Harry Carey, love you, man. You know? They get it. They just get it. It's just a place that you go to be a part of something. You can do it too. So can you. So can you. So can you. So can you. And the last thing I want to say to make your business the best it can be in 2017, aside from seeing yourself as a media company and giving, 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 and then asking, is just care more than everyone else. I was a college football player. I wasn't that athletic. I wasn't that fast. I did one thing better than every single person on the team all the time. I worked harder. I worked so hard and I punted, literally no pun intended, everything else. I didn't drink in high school. I didn't drink for the first two years of college. I didn't party. I didn't date in college. I didn't go to parties. I, didn't, I took the classes that I knew would be easiest because I worked harder than everyone else. And caring to me equals how hard you work. I could have written this speech that I did for you today in one hour. You know how many hours I took preparing? About 30. Why? Because I genuinely care about every single one of you here. Because I got onto your profiles. By the way, who has the Disney uh, ex excursion program? Who has the Disney? Uh, someone wrote me that they have a Disney getaway. But anyway, I thought that was awesome. But okay, anyway, I got on every single one of your profiles. I rewrote the speech so many times to make sure that I could try to hit as many of the things that you care about as possible. I care. Our grandparents' generation, even our parents' generation, the reason they won in business was not because they had the best product. My grandparents had a meat store. You know how many meat stores there were in Peoria? They cared. They knew how, who your family was. They knew it was important to you. They talked to you. They treated you like human beings. And for everyone in this room, that thinks that social media is destroying our world, you don't know how to use it. You're not using it right. Social media allowed me to give a talk today that I could never, ever, ever have given. Because I wouldn't have known how your website and how your Twitter and how your Instagram looked. The only thing that social media does is amplify what we could already do. So if you already care, you can care more. If you already work hard, you can work harder. So combine that thing that you love and care and surprise your customers. And you know what? When they write on your Facebook wall, hey, Kyle, loved your video about the five foods. Can you send me more information? You know you do, and this is gonna blow your mind. You write them back. <laughs> I know them. <laughs> you write them back. And you don't hire someone to write them back. Would you hire someone to call your mom back? You have to see these people as like your mom. It's your family. They're trusting you with their health. They're trusting you with their new home, with your finances, with their finances, with their businesses. <laughs> like, if you don't take this stuff seriously, then just get out. Seriously, just get out. Because entrepreneurship is hard. And it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of effort, and you have to sacrifice so many things all the time. But if it's really in you, like, I, I literally, the thought of doing anything else makes me, like, want to die. Makes me like anxious. And if you're not there, then maybe you should just go work for someone and that's fine too. But get real with yourself about what you want and care more, right? Before I jump into Q&A, I, I do want to do Q&A and I think we have some good time. Yeah, we have, oh, 35. Okay, okay. L um, let's just do some Q&A right now. Who, who, has, who has questions? Any questions about your business? 
Uh, anything at all. Don't be shy. Yes, ma'am. Do we, do we have a mic for her by chance? <coughs> Sandy, I wouldn't need a microphone, but Sandy needs a microphone. I love microphones because I talk Good. so softly. Um, okay, you said, okay, we're going to be, be focused on us yep. and do what we're best at, but yep. then you said be a media company, which is not what you're best at. Is there something that you can utilize some kind of a oh, okay. to do all those things very quickly? Great question, and sorry that wasn't clear. What I'm, what I'm suggesting to everyone in the room is do what you're best at and then turn that into a media company. Right, so what do you love to do, young lady? I love to, I love to create um, quilts for other people. Good, so, so a, quilt, a quilt stitching company, you, is a time for money business. Right? So you can only have so many people come to your door. What I would do if I were you is I would do a series of videos that say something like, um, learn how to quilt in 10 days with, what's your name? Sandy. Sandy. Learn how to quilt in 10 days with Sandy. Then what I would do is I would have every sing single person that bought one of your quilts, I would have them take a picture with you and put it on their social media and say, hey, Sandy makes awesome quilts. Now you're hitting them on Facebook, now you're hitting them on Instagram, now you're hitting them on Twitter. Then your YouTube video is on your YouTube station. It goes onto your website. It goes onto your Facebook. Now you're hitting them on your social media. Then all of a sudden you become the person that's teaching people how to quilt. Talk to them about the one that you're making right now, why it's important. Tell the stories behind the quilts that you make. And then at the very end of four or five videos, you say, hey, holiday season's coming up. Great Christmas gift. I'll start them now. Let me know if you're interested. After four or five free things where they've gotten to know you. That's how you turn yourself as a quilter into a media company. I understand. Good. Good question. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. You're great one. Other questions? We have a few up here. I know that there are scheduling tools for Facebook, yep. LinkedIn, that type of thing. Yep. I have not found a good one for Instagram. Hootsuite. It is Hootsuite. Hootsuite. I had a problem with that one. I'll try it H -O again. For all of you that don't know, it's a great question. H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E dot com. You can literally pre-schedule all of your tweets and your uh, Instagram posts and your Facebook posts. That's something that if, you, if you're like, oh, so much time then you can hire someone on Fiverr or freelancer.com to do that for you. I would highly suggest you write your own copy. I would highly suggest that you come up with your own things that you put up and then have someone else just schedule for you. Good question. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Brian. Hey. Uh, Monica Dunn. Hey, Monica. Oh, yeah. So I took your advice. I've already got um, somebody on freelancer.com. Oh. I accepted the job for by the way, we, bucks. By the way, we, by the way, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm a huge interrupter. We talked two hours ago. Congratulations. You took action. So for 35 bucks in one day, the branding I've requested is going to be done. I've been tr I, I spent three hours last night trying to figure out how to use Canva yeah. to create colors, a color scheme. Yeah. So my question to you yeah. is, without spending tons of time, but wanting to do it myself, how do you, um, I need a, what is it, what I'm looking for? Something to automate emailing, something to automate some of these other things. Mailchimp.com will allow you to automate your email. First of all, a couple of things that are important to what you said. It's a good question. The first thing is without doing it for a lot of time is basically not possible. Like. This is something that, I, that, that people, everyone wants a shortcut to the work. The work you gotta put in. Now once you've done the work, there are systems and tools in place. So that's what you're looking for. So MailChimp.com is the cheapest, it's called a CRM. It's the cheapest one that exists. So MailChimp is useful if you, how many people in here have a list of people? Really important thing. I don't have a, I don't have time to get into it right now, but I'm gonna I'm actually gonna make you an offer about a way to continue working together in a second. It's in there. But basically, if you have a list of people and you want to sell to them or you just want to engage them in the community, then you need a software tool like this, like what Monica is talking about. The best thing that I've found for a low budget start starting place is Mailchimp.com. And so basically, you can just say 
you can program. I want to send email one, January 21st at 9 a.m. I want to send email two, January 24th, 9 a.m. I want to send email three, January 30th, 9 a.m. And it just runs without you having to do it. That's a good tool. Mailchimp.com. There are other ones like Infusionsoft. I know we have an Infusionsoft expert somewhere here. Yeah, we use Infusionsoft. Infusionsoft is great, but I think it's if you're more advanced. If, yes. if you're just getting started, I would use Mailchimp because it's 15 bucks a month. Infusionsoft's like a couple hundred a month, so it's a very big different price range. Mailchimp.com will do everything that you need to do to get started, but building a list is super, super important. Email marketing is kind of dying just because so many people are doing it, but having that in place as another part of your media company, great strategy. Okay, and then um, she just asked me to ask you, how do we keep that from going to spam, one? Yeah. Okay. My question then is, best funnel to use or best funnels to use to get the people, you know, to, 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 to convert your likes and shares to, I want to buy your stuff, Got it. I don't care what you're saying. Great question. Spam, if they opt in, it won't be spam. So you have to have them opt into your email. And you, the way that you do that, this is a good question, is you basically set up a campaign, this is super important for anyone that wants to build a list. Here's what you do. Number one, you give something away for free. If you go to my website, you will see on every single page, I'm giving you something away for free. I'm giving you my free ebook. I'm giving you a free video series. That's how you get them in, right? Free ebook, free video series. And then from there, it's the same thing as I told you about the media company flow, which is give, 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 free, 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 ask. So, for example, I would, I would do, a, remind me again where you work? Okay, so health and wellness skincare. Maybe it's a video about um, you know how to keep your vitamin D high in the winter. Maybe it's a video about the best products to use that won't make you break out in the winter. You know, I'm, I'm making this stuff up, but then you just go bah, 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 and then at the very end you say, for today only, I'm offering a you know five part coaching series or a five part product line that'll deliver to your doorstep for Christmas or whatever, and and that's how you do the email campaign. Free, 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 free. Ask. Free, 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 ask. Never sell. Never, ever, ever, ever sell on the first email. Ever. Second email, third email, fourth email, either. Build the community. And then in terms of how do you get them there, you have to create a landing page. So what this means for everyone in, in the Facebook and Instagram world, you take them to a website. So it's, for me, it's brianrashen.com slash public speaking. That takes you to a page where you can put your name and your email. So everything directs back to a source of some sort. So if you have a company, if you have a business, everything that you're doing should, do, so in your YouTube descriptions, link back to a place where you can get people on your list. Always. Good question. Great question. Yes, ma'am. Couple more here. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You just got a question. Uh, what was the most interesting things you've learned uh, being a storytelling consultant for some of the big companies like Google um, in terms of you know business or just insights you've learned um, as they've hired you, you know, working with some of the execs there? Good question. It's, it's really tell a story that people can connect with. Uh, my mic's off. Test, test, test. I can come up here. Yeah. Here. All right, so the, the, thing, the thing that all of these companies are doing well is that you you see Google's recap of 2016. You see how they did it, everything through the Google search. It was like, it, it gave me chills. But what Google and Facebook and these companies do really well is that they understand completely the value of attention. And they work extremely hard at looking at where the attention is and how to get more of it. So you have to almost think about who is on your platform and why are they there? People on Facebook are, you know the biggest population of people on Facebook right now is like moms between 40 and 60. <laughs> they're, like li they're like living on Facebook right now. So Facebook might tell a different story knowing that that's their current user base. Snapchat's a bunch of 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds. So that story is different. So just really it's knowing your audience and making that audience feel like they're a part of whatever they're doing with the company. All right, I'll take one more question one and then I do want to make a special offer for you guys at the very end. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was raised in the generation that we didn't have all the computers, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have all yeah. this. Um, I've been 20 years or so self-employed. Congratulations. Doing restaurants and so forth that I didn't have to deal with emails. 
I don't know a lot about this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to learn. Do you have a suggestion that I can go in? Because everything you said sounds great, but I haven't got a clue how to even that's a, start. That's a great question. Thank you for asking. Thank you for your, your honesty. Uh, can I ask you a question? Do you, do you know how to ride a bike? Yeah. Did you, were you born knowing how to ride a bike? This is something that people ask me all the time. I'm just not good at this social media stuff. I'm like, we well, weren't good at riding a bike either when you were first born. Seriously. If you want to be good at it, you've run a business for 20 years, which means you're a winner, period. You've run a business by yourself for 20 years in one of the hardest, you know, in New York City, 90% of restaurants fail. It's the, one of the hardest industries. If you've been able to figure out the trends and what keeps you relevant in the hardest industry in the world, I promise you, spend five hours on YouTube watching the social stuff and you'll figure it out. I promise. You can do this. All right, guys, really quick thing before we wrap. I want to make a special offer to you. Now, I'm just going to do this quickly because I know we're almost out of time and it's time for lunch. I want to share with you everything that I've learned in the last five years about making good money being a storyteller and a speaker. I think that every single one of you in this audience today is sitting in, on, in a chair and you have an opportunity to really make more money than you're making by sharing your voice, your experience, your expertise, and your knowledge. So what I've done is I've put together a one hour course. It's a video course. I'll have it to you within 24 to 48 hours of you signing up. If you go to that thing, that website, brianrashid.com slash voice, for today only, I'm making you an offer that it's gonna be $97. It's normally $297 on my website, and an hour with me would be about $500. So this is, this is literally, this investment of $97 like could pay off itself off 10, 100, even 1,000 X for you. It's everything I know. There's four parts to the course, and here's what they are. Part number one is the myth that, that almost everyone is telling you as to why you can't make more money as a speaker. And by the way, I don't just mean speaker like me here in front of 300 people. I mean like you making a sales presentation. I mean like you in front of your team. I mean like you in any situation, maybe you want to make a YouTube station, maybe you want to do, be better at Facebook ads, maybe you want to be better in the social world. You gotta know how to tell a story. I'm gonna share with you, number one, the seven myths that are behind, the, re the, the reasons behind why most people never get started doing anything with their voice and their experience. All of you have different experiences that you could monetize if you knew what to do. <coughs> number two, how do you create compelling content? How do you create content that's so good that no one's gonna forget what it is? How do you know how to create content in this digital world, right? That's number two. I'm gonna walk you through some of the ways that I create content for myself that I've been able to monetize my brand in a really nice way, and as well as for the best companies in the world we are using these same strategies, right? Number three, now you have the content. What do you do with it? How do you deliver it like a pro? Some public speaking tips that, I've worked, that have worked for me and for other executives. How do you deliver that content in a way that's great and it's gonna capture people's attention Right, because again, that's the most important thing. And then number four, the thing that we hate the most, how the heck do you sell yourself? Right, most people spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on fancy DVDs and fancy articles and fancy this and that. You can actually do it in one page. I'm gonna show you the exact one pager, the methodology behind it, and why it works. Right, and so that is the, the first thing. If I can be of service to you in your business, I, do do, I don't have much space for one-on-one -on -one coaching, but if you're interested in having me work one-on-one -on -one with you from anywhere in the world, we can just do it on Skype or Google Hangout, email me at my email address. And the final thing I wanna tell you that is so exciting to me, so that's, that's it, that's the sales pitch. I, I think it's an incredible investment. I honestly think every single person should sign up for this course, 97 bucks today only. The coolest thing for me about all of this and why I love seeing so many different faces in the audience, so many different ages, is because we live in the greatest country in the world to do business, period. Because the market, you know, it's like, everyone is, is, is so worried about Trump, right? Everyone's, and maybe some of you really here like Trump, I don't care at all about politics, so like, don't, don't worry about it. I just think that this is the year that we get to say, you know what, whoever's the president, it doesn't matter. Whoever, whoever's doing this, it doesn't matter. We get to go on offense this year. And you know why? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're black or yellow or white or green or an alien or 50 or 60 or 100 or five. You know who decides if your stuff is good? The market. 
That is what is exciting to me. I don't care where you went to college. I don't care how much money your parents have. I don't care if you're an immigrant. If you give me something that's so good, I'm going to buy it, then you'll win. So think about what am I so good at that the market wants to buy it, put all of your energy there. I always joke, I say, you know what? Your daddy can pay your way into Stanford or Harvard or Yale, but your daddy can't buy the whole market, right? He just can't, he doesn't have enough money. So we are in a position, the most exciting time where communication is changing, where social media makes it easier and cheaper than ever to build our own brands. It's never, ever, ever easier to make money doing what you love. So if you wanna do something great, and if you wanna start making money doing what you love, the first thing that you have to do is simple. It's one word, and I hope that you all start today. The word is this, you just start. Thank you very much.